Hi everybody, this is Pete. First thing I want to do is say thanks for being here to watch the videos. And sorry it's been a while since I posted one. And next thing I want to apologize is the camera angle on these. It's a little bit weird. I would put a extended battery on the back of the GoPro and it changed the angle and I didn't realize how much. So I apologize for this. It does get better later in the videos. This is from Friday, May 15th. I went out to Chocolate Bay to fish. The weather report was outstanding. Low winds out of the east. And the soul lunar and report for fishing and one of the weather channels report for fishing both said a bad day to be fishing. But bad day fishing is better than a great day at work. So I headed down, give it a try. And fortunately for me, the weather report and that solar lunar thing were wrong. I'm not sure if I put a lot of stock in those. I'm not sure if the fish can read them. Anyway, I went down there to give it a try. And I hit, when I'm Chocolate Bay, I was hitting a lot of uh, black drum, a lot of small catfish, and about three or four stingrays. And I had one really large fish who took off running and spit the hook. On the hooks, I was trying to use circle hooks. One of the guys who subscribed suggested I try circle hooks. So I said I'd give that a try and see what happens. It helps to save the fish because they're not pulling the fish in or the hooks in too deep. You don't have to tear them up to get them out. Stopping because this little red drum was just gorgeous. The colors on this thing was beautiful. And really healthy looking little fish. I mean, look at the color on him. Like I said, apologize for the can rambles. You gotta measure them. Just to make sure. I was thinking if this guy had been legal, I'm pretty sure I would have put him back. Just, he's too pretty to kill. Even for dinner. There was a lot of fish out there. They were biting. I threw lures. I threw um, live shrimp. I threw dead shrimp. The black drum were hitting dead shrimp and live shrimp. Catfish were eating mostly the dead shrimp, and same with the stingrays. Overall, it was a great day on the water. It was pretty calm. The winds were real low. There was a lot of little bites. Not a lot of big fish, though. On Chocolate Bay, I hit two keeper black drums. I hit a whole bunch of little reds, and a couple of them were 15 to 17 inches, but all in all, not too many redfish, and I paddled all over looking for them. I went from the launch point out into the bay, and I paddled about three miles out into the bay along the edges and stuff to uh, see what was out there. Around, I decided around three o'clock that I'd get off the water and go over to uh, Powderhorn Lake. I still had shrimp left and see what was going on over there. I really apologize about this camera angle. It's kind of hard. The bad thing about doing videos like this is it's not like a TV show where they can do multiple takes and they have multiple cameras running. I have one camera I'm using, so what I get is what I get. Hey, this little redfish right here, when I first saw him with his colors and stuff, I thought it was a speckled trout. You know, just his shape and stuff. And the colors were really, really nice. Fish look like they've been eating well. They look healthy. And 
put them all back when they're too small and come back in a year and catch them again, hopefully. On this one, I was running a popping cork with a live shrimp under it, and a little old black drum were loving that. I'd been throwing out, and I'd lose the bait, and I'd throw it out again, and lose the bait, and finally, I caught the little guy who was eating them all. I talked to the fish a little bit before I throw them back, tell them to go out there, send their big brother back, and I'll give him a free meal. This is one of those ones where I caught it on camera and at first I thought it was a stingray because it was pulling a stingray off the bottom is kind of like trying to pull up a garbage can lid. It's just kind of a pain. But instead it turned out to be the famous oyster fish. Okay, moved over to uh, Powderhorn Lake. I'm fishing out there. I got some really nice bites. I lost some good sized fish using the circle hooks. Setting them's kind of a pain. There's a thing where you start reeling instead of trying to just jerk and set it. You have to reel and pull them in, forge in stuff. So, I'm learning. This is all about learning how to fish. Not an expert, I just like to fish. One of the strange things that happened when I put out a powder horn lake was there was two guys that pulled up right after me and they were getting ready to put a boat in the water and one of the guys looked at me and said, hey, you make videos? I said, excuse me? He says, do you make videos? I said, on YouTube, you mean? He goes, yeah. I said, well, yeah. He goes, I recognize your rods because of the uh, plastic I got wrapped around them. So that's the first time that's ever happened. I was kind of like thunderstruck on that one and what I really should have done is taken his picture. I didn't, and I apologize for that. But if you ever happen to see me out and around, you recognize me, just say, Hey, Pete, come on over and talk. This was the first black drum I caught on uh, Powderhorn Lake when I got over there. And again, it was a nice day. The water was calm. The temperature of the water was running uh, 78 degrees. What just happened was when I was pulling this in, that fish got up. I never got a look at him. He was fighting real good, and it was one of the circle hooks. And as he got up along the side of the boat, he let go. And the hook, the sinker, whole nine yards comes flying up into there. I'm not sure if I really like that that much. This is another one of those little red fish who likes to fight. They're fun to catch. Another 15, 17, maybe 18 inches. They put up a really good fight. And you get them off the hook as quick as you can and you put them back on the water and you come back in a couple of years and you catch them again. Pretty little fish. And back he goes. I like catching the black drum. The small ones, the big ones, they put up a great fight. This little guy was tripping line off the reel. First I thought he was a fair sized redfish. Then when he gets up alongside the boat, he's what, 14, 15 inch uh, black drum. But he put up a good fight and they're fun to catch. Gotta be careful when you handle these guys because 
at the end of their uh, fins, they have little barbs, and you get stuck, and it lets you know about it for about a good three, four days. And yes, I talk to the fish while I'm talking, while I'm bringing them in, tell them to calm down and knock it off, and we'll get you off the hook real quick and put you back, and I don't think they listen. I'm not sure if I'd listen to me after I just put a hook in my mouth and pulled me up out of the water. Not sure if I'd be that trusting. Got to measure them. There he goes. This fish took it and started running with stripping line. I'm getting ready to pull him in. I'm worried about getting it on camera. And I'm doing everything I shouldn't be doing. What I should be doing is worrying about getting that fish up to the boat and getting it in the net. And I was playing around and being silly. And because I lost tension on the line somewhere in there, the fish got off. And that's what happens. And that's what happens when I mess around. Exactly. I was fishing down by what they call the crop circles. And around those, somebody has built a little retaining wall with rocks. And I'm sitting in about three and a half, four feet of water. And I'm throwing about five feet off that wall into about a foot and a half of water. There's a lot of nooks and crannies down there with all those rocks, and the redfish like to get in there, and they're looking for crabs and shrimp and whatever else they can find to eat. So I threw a live shrimp in there on a Carolina rig, and this redfish hit it and took off running. One of the things you got to worry about fishing up there around that wall is underneath it's not even, and the redfish will run around and they'll go around one of the uh, rocks out there and start running and it'll cut you off. That happened a few times on Friday where they'll get up in there and get tangled in there and you're pretty much done. Most you can hope for is to get back to your uh, rig. But this guy was stripping line and running. I like the way the redfish fight. It's a lot of fun. And these guys will fight their hearts out. All the way up to the boat, they'll fight. And they will literally fight themselves to death. So you got to be careful with them. Once you get them in, if you, when you put them back in the water, make sure they got good water over their gills, revive them, or else they'll just turn belly up and die on you. I'm going to tell you, those fish out there are eating healthy. They're eating good. These fish are healthy. They're fat. Colors are great. Twenty-five-inch redfish. Good to see him. And as I throw this guy back in the water, you can't see what I do next. Is for the next couple of minutes, I'm dragging him back and forth to get water over his gills and revive him. I uh, put another live shrimp throughout in the same place. A lot of times, the redfish will swim in schools, and you'll hit one, and you'll spook the rest of them. But apparently, that didn't happen because. Almost immediately, I hooked up again. And again, stripping line and running. Good fight. And where I'm fishing is, like I said, right up against that seawall or that uh, break wall they built out there, right where the crop circles hit or start. And I fish from there, and there's a little point you can go around. I haven't fished too much further down there. I'm going to give it a try. But a lot of times with the way the wind blows and the waves and stuff, it's a big hassle to get back in there. Another nice looking redfish. Like I said, they're eating really, really well back in there. These guys are all coming in and they're fat. This fish was on a J hook. 
Like I said, I tried the circle hooks and I was running a combination of those two. Got it measured, turned out to be 24 inches. Nice looking redfish. Like I said, they're eating really well down there. A lot of bait in that area. I'm throwing my lines out and I'm watching shrimp jump from where it's hit next to the reeds and the grass. So it's the end of the day, I'm pulling everything in and out of nowhere, a little speckled trout comes in. So, get it measured, turns out to be 17 inches. Check my little cheater thing on the back. You don't want to have an undersized or an oversized fish. They catch you, bad things happen. Cruising in at the end of the day, heading back to the uh, Powderhorn Lake RV Center. And just a beautiful day, water was really smooth. It looks a lot rougher than this than it really felt like. And going into their channel, you come down the channel, it's the Friday night uh, RV park get together. George Strait's on. You gotta love Texas. All right, here you are cleaning up after yesterday's fishing trip. Everything's back to where it should be. On the way home, I stop at a car wash and spray this thing down pretty good. Just to make sure I get all the mud and stuff off, off of it. Then I go over it again in the morning. Make sure I haven't missed anything. Spray down the rods one more time. And here's a mod I made on my uh, stakeout stick. I was using the flat bungee cords. I'm still working on this, but it worked really well for the first part yesterday. This is what I connect with to the um, anchor trolley. Then I use the electrical ties to tie two of these flat bungee cords together through a D-ring. And it worked really well. The problem I've had is these things, if you don't have them like this, they're stretching out and you're replacing them because they just get worn out real quick. What I have to work on now is fixing this right here. So what I think I'm going to do is end up sewing it and take it where there's two of those instead of four because that's just kind of big. But it worked really well yesterday. It held. Did what I wanted it to. Life was good. Now, let's see what we did in the way of fish yesterday. Ooh, where I can clean them, take care of them. Last night I got home, it was real late, I didn't want to mess with them. So they've been on ice all night, so we'll take care of that in a couple minutes. Okay, and this is from yesterday's catch. A couple redfish. Three black drum. And a speckled trout I didn't even know I had. All in all, not a bad day. The funny thing about yesterday was I checked the uh, Soul Lunar calendar for fishing and it said poor day for fishing. I checked the uh, weather report for the fishing report and they said bad day for fishing. And it turned out to be a pretty good day. So maybe those reports aren't all they're cracked up to be. On the redfish, one of the things I like to do before I bring them in is I bleed them. I didn't do this yesterday. I didn't have an ice bag to put them in. The water temperature was running around 78 to 81 degrees out there, and that's kind of warm to keep uh, dead fish in. So I kept them alive until I put them in the cooler. And I didn't do it at the pier yesterday. There's a lot of people there, and I just didn't get around to it. But there's two ways to do it, or a couple ways, I guess, you can do this. One, you can cut their throat right through here. That goes to their gills, it's their arteries that come up to their heart. And the other way is if you don't have a knife with you or a rope, don't feel like messing with it, you take your fingers right here and slide it in, and it goes right in easy on both sides. Back it up a little. Right here, just push. It goes straight in, it's easy, slide your finger back and forth, and it cuts all their arteries and makes it easy to bleed them out. Turn it on. And this is it. Red drum, black drum, 
speckled trout. Already going freezer.